Thank you everyone for coming for my presentation. And it's going to be about Android and iOS and making our apps wait less. So just a few words about me. I'm working at Game Desire, which is a Poland, Polish uh, game development company based in Krakow. So just a few hours of uh, ride from here. And uh, I have more than six years in experience in both Android and iOS uh, development, and more than nine years uh, in Qt. Okay, I don't think I have to explain the why for this problem. Everyone wants to have uh, his or her app wait as, uh, to be as small as possible. But uh, worth mentioning are those limits, which are listed here. So for Android, a single APK file cannot exceed 100 megabytes. Mm, if it does, it has to be split up into some external resources. So we don't want to do that, perhaps. And for iOS, there is a limit of 150 megabytes. Uh, and there is no, possible, no possibility to download uh, a bigger app than that using cellular network. So if we want our users to be able to download our app wherever they are, we want to have our app less than that. Actually, this 150 megabyte limit was just changed a few couple of weeks ago with introduction of iOS 11. It was also 100 megabytes earlier. Uh, so there are many existing solutions to that problem, mm, and there are based on different layers, what can we optimize? And of course, with this 25 minute talk, I don't have time to talk about all of them. So I just mentioned uh, Qt Lite, uh, or just an ability to change uh, for static linting or, so, or some of our libraries and let the compiler optimize uh, the, the size of our binaries. Uh, and in terms of assets we have, and as I told you, I'm from game development company, so we have very, very much different assets with our libraries deployed. So be it uh, videos, images, fonts, sounds, music, etc. We really care about it. Uh, there are some optimization tools I encourage you to use if you haven't heard about them, like Great Image Optim. It's free macOS app which uh, specialize in optimizing any different graphical resources. And you can save up to 50, 60, 70% of, of graphic, any graphic size. So I really encourage you to do that if you're lucky enough to have Mac. If not, there is a Kraken.io uh, website with similar service, which does that for money. And the thing I'm going to focus on is custom platform solutions for handling special assets you want to have for special target devices. And uh, during this talk, I will talk mostly about images <clears throat> because it's the, I think, easiest example, but uh, it can apply to any other type of assets, so it's not limited to images. And uh, these two things I will talk about is iOS app thinning and how to integrate with Qt, and Android multiple APK combined with product flavors coming from Gradle, which will do similar thing. Okay, so this is the basic overview, how iOS app slicing works. And it uh, means that you have to mark your resources, in our example, it will be images, uh, for what target they are. So let's say we have one image which is uh, drawn for low resolution tablets, low resolution iPad. So we have to mark that image that it's uh, targeted for this device. And we have the second version of this graphic which is mm, for, I don't know, high resolution iPhone. We also mark it. We do that for every resource we want to um, be sliced. And uh, then we're able to create normal archive like any iOS app and upload it to App Store. And this is a great thing about Apple that all the other things will be done automatically by Apple. So we don't have to worry about it. Apple will create all the variants, variants of our app for all possible Apple devices. Uh, 
and customers will download only portion of our resources which are meant specially for this device user has. So if user has, for example, low resolution iPad, he will get only resources which are marked for low resolution iPads and will not get any other. This applies also uh, to different architectures. So if you are, um, and it's done automatically. So if you, we are building for two architectures, that's ARM v7 and ARM64, a uh, user downloads only the code for his architecture. And as I said, this is done automatically. The only thing we want to do, um, we have to do, in order to enable this feature is mark our resources for which target they are created. And the slicing can be done by different dim dimensions. Mm, just to name a few, it's device type or different scales. It's, uh, I mean, images scales. So they're for retina, high retina, or non-retina. So that's X1, X2, X3, uh, and a couple of other dimensions are possible. And it requires all those data, in our case images, to be put in Xcode assets catalogs, which are supported from, I think, iOS 7, but I'm not sure. I, I know that for, I will talk about it later, maybe. This is the case, how it looks like in Xcode. And this example, uh, in this example we have three images which are basically the same images targeted for iPhone with high resolution, that's 2X, and iPad low resolution, iPad high resolution. And as we can think about this, they will be split and each device will have only one version of this image downloaded. Uh, okay, in case of Android, the things are, as usually, a bit more complicated. So. There is actually a similar thing achievable with Android, but we have to do more things. <laughs> so first of all, Google is not able to resign our application. Uh, when we are uploading application signed by some key to Google, Google cannot modify it. So it cannot split our application into some variants like Apple does. So if we, we want to have different kind of our application, different variants of our application targeted for different devices, we have to do it on our own. And it results in the fact that we have to provide many uh, APK files for each update. So in case of uh, Apple, we're just marking assets and upload one archive. In case of Google, uh, we have to do it as many APK files, as many variants we want to support. For our case, it's 14. So with every update of our Android app made with Qt, we're uploading 14 APK files to Google Play. And it can be sleep, split also by many different dimensions. And uh, it means uh, Google Play filters. So for each of those APKs, not only we are putting proper data, proper images inside, but we have to tell also Google Play that this application variant is for the special device. So we, for example, have uh, an APK for low resolution phones. We have to, first of all, put our low resolution phone assets inside. And the second one important thing is to make Google Play know that this is application for a low resolution phone. So it will be distributed to those low resolution phones and not to other devices. And there is a built-in Gradle support for splits, which does exactly that, but it's very limited. So I won't be using it, and we are not using it in production. I just mentioned it exists, and for maybe simpler cases, it's there, but we want more. And this is the thing we are using. It's called product flavors. I also will not talk too much about it because it's quite a complex feature to describe in general, but in just few words, it means that 
you can have one application which will split into many APK files, what we exactly want to do it, and they will vary but, um, by little things. So we can, for example, have different uh, Java sources or different uh, Java resources or different translations or anything different and uh, make your application compile with all the things in common and few different things for each product flavor. So let's think about it like targets, just specialized targets. And in this case, we are using seven targets for each architecture. So this is seven target for uh, ARM and for x86, which we are supporting. And the good thing is that it's very flexible and you can basically do anything you want with it. And in this example, I will show you in a minute, it will be done. So it was just a few words about what it is and how to marry it with Qt now. I think the most interesting part for you. And uh, all the things is based on our real case scenario on our application, which is available in store. So this is in production, this is working. So <laughs> it's kind of reliable. <laughs> and uh, the most important thing is also, as I have 10 minutes left, that there will be a link ex to my GitHub project, which will be set up for exact this the thing we're talking about at the end of my presentation i encourage you to check all the things on your own it's working it's quite complex but you can do it at your home with your own pace uh, and as i said we're using many different dimensions which for us are low the pi high the pi uh, devices and three type of devices. So it's phone, tablet seven inch and tablet 10 inch. In terms of iOS, we need uh, to have project deployment targets set to at least iOS 9.0 for NS data asset support, which will be shown in a few slides. And there are some limitations, I'll skip it for now. Um, first thing, in case of images, we have to make sure that all images have proper suffixes. Uh, it's the naming convention which was adopted from Apple and is used also with Qt, so all our images have to have suffixes at 2x, at 3x, it depends on how um, high density we have there. And we have to group them by those suffixes in different uh, QRC files. So we make sure that all the stuff, in this case images for low resolution phone, are in the same QRC file. And for different targets, there is a different QRC file. Of course, for each target, there can be many QRC files, but the point is that it single QRC file are files only for one target group you want to support. So in our cases, and there will be six of them um, because there will be low resolution and high resolution phones, the same for tablet seven inch and the same for tablet 10 inch. So it will be six QRC files. And the second thing is we want to have these files split by Apple so we don't want to compile them into our binary. So we don't put them into our resources variable in our QMake file, our profile. We just want to use external resources compiler, which is RCC, um, to compile them into binary file and set up those binary files in Xcode to be used like the image from previous example. So, this is just a simple comment um, to compile any QRC file into some binary file. And when you have already those six binary files, we are putting them into asset catalog and mark them for proper devices. So each of the, the file will be set there. And I can think, just show how does it look like or not. 
Okay, I will switch to it in a minute. Uh, okay, the last thing is we want to load it and register in Q resources so we can use all those files, be it QML, be it uh, images, like any normal files. So it's just a few lines of Objective C++. Mm, we will have to do it. And it's very simple. We are just using NS data asset. Um, we are just passing the name of uh, asset catalog we have created and uh, copying those data and uh, registering it using Q resource, register resource method. So it's quite simple. We just have to see how it works in Objective C, but it's, it's uh, very simple. And after that, we'll be guaranteed that we will use only assets on iOS uh, for that target group, be it iPhone low resolution, for example. Apple will take care of it. And of course, all these steps, it would be nice to, uh, for them to be automated. Like, we don't have to uh, run this RCC compiler comment on our own, and uh, all those images, when we change our QRC resources, it would be nice to be automatically compiled. So in my project available on GitHub, it is already uh, implemented uh, as a different sub-project in Qt. Okay, coming to Android Wine 1. Um, the thing is, as I told already, a bit more complicated, but it has now special requirements, a part of Gradle and Android general knowledge. How does the thing works there? Um, and there is one limitation I have to talk uh, about. In case of Apple, we don't have to wear, be wary, don't have to worry about which device will get which version, which variant of our application, because it will be done automatically by Apple. In case of Google, we are making different versions of our APK and setting different Google Play filters. And first of all, we can be wrong, and we can set wrong filters, which will result in people uh, downloading, for example, app variant meant for iOS, uh, oh, meant for low resolution phones into high resolution phone. Uh, or even worse, because um, Android is open, so you can download APKs not only from Google Play, but also from some third-party devices, third-party sites. And user can have different APK file than it has device from different targets. So it can be handled. You can write code to um, recognize such situation and react properly. But you must be aware that this is the case. Um, Okay, it's quite advanced stuff also. So first three steps are almost identical. So we just put in our images and make all the suff suffixes proper and putting e each of them in separate QRC file. The second is, uh, and the, all those three steps are, as I told, very similar to iOS ones. The magic happens next. We are creating different REST folder structure for every product flavor we want to support. So in our case, there's for six different types for three types of device, normal, large, x-large, this phone, tablet 7, tablet 10, uh, multiplied by two different densities we are supporting. So that's six. We are creating six folders and make our script copy those six resulting binary compiled RCC file uh, into those folders. And then we have to set up in Gradle all the paths for each of the product flavors. So each product flavor gets only assets meant for them and, of course, shared common ones. And load it via JNI from C++ using Java. So this is a Java method of loading regular data from row folder. It's not quite complicated. As you can see, it returns a byte array. And we call that method from JNI, from C++, with this code. It's all available on GitHub. 
as I told you already. And we can see that uh, we'll get those binary file as in iOS. And we are registering using the same register resource method and all the things are already available. Okay, the last thing is we want to update our Android manifest with those Google Play filters. So each of this variant, which uh, will tell Google Play that, hey, I'm just for low res resolution phones, don't, uh, don't send me to any other device. And there will be some problems with Qt Creator because Qt Creator doesn't support um, generating and signing multiple IPKs at once, but it can be handled. In my example, it is. So please read uh, comments in this example. And I think that's it. We know it's a bit complicated, and so if you want to use that, please carefully read how it works. And if it needs your purposes, perhaps you don't want to uh, have uh, six versions. Maybe you have uh, you want to have more or less. So you can, of course, this example change for your needs. And uh, Google is working on some automatic solution, which will be called Google App Signing, but I know that um, when I read basic idea how it will work, um, they are planning to do it in a way that this already, what we are presenting here, this um, example is far more advanced. So even if Google App Signing will be there, so it will split your application by many more, many less dimensions that is possible to do it uh, manually with Gradle. Okay, so our gains after that thing we've, we've done, we had our applications around 100 megabytes, um, and now our application is on iOS. It weights about 33 megabytes on Retina iPhones, 58 on Retina iPads, and on Android, as you can see, the lowest app variant weights about 18 megabytes, which for us is very, very good achievement. So, debugging also of this thing is not easy, especially if you're not fami familiarized, fami especially if you're not good at Android and iOS. <laughs> Hard words. Uh, so, do it carefully. Mm, I'm available also on QtMob Slack channel if you would want to ask me anything about uh, this project and how it's done or the little technical details I wasn't able to present now. And the link here is on the bottom for this project. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you.